So let's look at um, recursive formulas. And one recursive formula is called the, the Fibonacci sequence. There's many of them, but this is a relatively popular one that occurs in nature. And as I just found out, it occurs with honeybees, apparently. So um, here's kind of our explanation. So we'll have to know this little rule here in order to build the sequence, because we're going to build the Fibonacci sequence from scratch. Um, and then we'll talk about how it's recursive and what a recursive formula is. So a female honeybee hatches from a, an egg laid by a female honeybee that has been fertilized by a male honeybee, which means it has two parents. Okay. Um, I've got some... See if I got like some kind of symbol we can use for that. Uh, great. Let's say the female honeybee B is the happy face, okay, and the male honeybee will be our our star. Um, the male honeybee hatches from an egg laid by a female honeybee. That's it. So there's only one parent. Okay. So this is the female, and actually maybe I should just write it as F, so it makes a little more sense to us. F N M. So our female honeybee. Um, we're going to go about building a several generations, but we're going to build it in reverse. A lot of times you'll see, mostly you have trees where, or a family tree, you know, you come from an ancestor and then those ancestors break off from there. We're going to kind of do the opposite and we're going to start with one and see where it would have came from. Okay. So think of this as almost like the, the youngest of uh, everything. So we'll start with a male honeybee. Okay. So our male honeybee or our star actually i can make this so i can just pull it apart here so make it a star okay so our male honeybee we know from the rules above kind of separated here we know from our rule above comes from just a female honeybee so that means a female honeybee birthed that male one right nothing else happened from it so it's strictly from a, a female honeybee okay so there's our, our f so there's one set of generations okay now the female honeybee has to come from both a male and a female, right? In order to build a female, they said that you need two parents. You need a male and a female. So we'll pull this over and we get a female and a male. Actually, I'm gonna use these because they're a little easier, okay? Now, from looking above, this being a male, we know a male comes from, again, just a female, okay? So there's only one parent again, so in this generation, so think of each of these rows that I'm building. This is kind of our first generation. Here's our second generation. Here's our third generation, okay? So we have one in the first generation, uh, one in the second generation, two in the third generation. This female we know has to come from um, a mixture of both a male and a female. So we'll split it up again, okay? This one has to come from a male and a female. So female put on the right again, male on the left, okay? This is, that was our third generation. This is our fourth generation, and there's one, two, three bees involved in that, okay? Um, then our fifth generation. Female has to come from both. Male comes from one, and a female has to come from, from both again. Um, Easier if I can just pull up from here. I'm gonna pull from one of these. Yeah, this in the corner. Okay. So um, this has to come from another female and a male. Okay. We know that the male comes from just a female, and then the female comes from both a male and a female again. Okay. So now we're entering our fifth generation. And in our fifth generation, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have Five bees in that generation, okay? We'll do one more set, and that will kind of give us our general idea. Male comes from just a female. Female comes from both. Female comes from both. Male comes from one. Female comes from both. And we'll just kind of populate our stars here. So male comes from a female. Female comes from both a female and a male. Pretty repetitive. Mm -hmm. Female, male, just female, and then female, Male. It's actually much faster. I'm going to load it this way. So our sixth generation of bees, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight in this. Okay. So let's actually write out our sequence. Okay. So a recursive formula, um, I'll usually number them. Okay. So the first term, so term number, that's how they refer to a term number. This would be the value of it. 
okay? So when n is 1, the very first term in our sequence is going to be the value of 1. So t at 1 is just 1. And that's the very first um, generation. Our second generation. So our second term number, that would be t2. What's the value of it? Well, the value is, again, a number 1. So in our second generation, only 1 is birthed again. The third term number, okay, um, is our third term, and it's the number 2. Okay. Our fourth term number ended up being 3. Our fifth term number ended up being 5. And our sixth term number ended up being 8. Okay. I wrote these t's just so you can see we're counting across. Okay. But in our sequence here, a recursive sequence, which is important, this is what we were talking about above. A recursive sequence deals with um, values before it. So in arithmetic, you're usually just adding something each time or subtracting something each time. Geometric, you're multiplying something each time or you're dividing by something each time. But in recursive, you actually need the first two terms. You'll need both of them because they're both involved in the building of the next term. Okay. So what actually ends up happening here, okay, we'll do it in green, is we're adding the first two terms together and getting the next term. And then we're adding these two terms together and getting the next term. So the term before is always important because we have to add to it. So using this concept, so 2 plus 3 equals our 5. That's how we get that number. 3 plus 5 gives us our 8. So our next term would be 5 plus 8. So that's going to give us our 13. So the next generation of honeybees would have that. So in recursive, all of the values before are very, very important. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say we were to continue with that. Um, 8 plus 13 in the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have 21 honeybees in the next generation. Okay, so that's pretty good. It can sometimes be pretty difficult to um, to build a recursive formula, so we're going to have to try to think of um, how to actually build this all together. So our third term, we're going to use these term values as we go through it. We know that we're adding the first two terms to get the, the next term. So usually we, down here, like I said, we have t at n. So we're usually building a formula where t at n is equal to something. Okay. Well, we know we don't really get a new term. We don't use this information until the third one. So we're using the term before the third one. So because we're using the number before three, we're using number two. But the problem is this has to be a general formula. It can't just be for the first value. So we know what we did is we taken this number three and we subtract it by one, and that took us to two. So t at n is going to be t at n minus one, and this is again to get this number 2. We also added this value, which is subtracting 2 by the ends. So t at n minus 1 plus t at n minus 2. And this is the Fibonacci sequence. This is the equation for it. So we can figure out any term values by using this information. So say we wanted to know, they asked us, oh, what is the uh, value of the you know, 20th term. Okay, well, the 20th term value is going to be equal to the 20 minus 1 plus 20 minus 2, which means the 20th term value is equal to the 19th term value plus the 18th term value. That's what we did to figure out the end. Now, we'll actually have to figure out what those term values are, which means we'd have to go pretty far into the sequence because we can't just solve it from those values. But that's how you kind of build a recursive formula. It's important that we use values that were important before the actual number we're looking up to. Okay? So it can sometimes be confusing because you need to use values that you just found in order to get it.